Are you an engineer that's recently got into mixing or possibly somebody that's been doing this for a while that likes to go back and refresh their thought process? Well, this is going to be a video specifically for you. Today, we are at Make Believe Studio with Rick Carson and Ryan Harvey. This is their home that they have graciously welcomed me into. And we are going to be going over five mixing tricks that I wish I knew when I started because a lot of the time you get into the game and you find out things way down the line that would have sped up your process. So we're gonna be picking these guys brains a bit and I'm gonna talk a little bit about stuff that I do. So let's get right into this one. One of the things that has really, really helped me along the way is utilizing a constant monitoring level, which is something that I picked up from reading everything I could about Bruce Swedeen. He tried to make sure that he was able to monitor at roughly the same level in every room that he went into. And I have kept that, you know, the same, but also I primarily work in my own room for the most part. And I have not changed the monitor level in that room in years at, you know, at this point. Same volume every day. If the vocal's too loud, it's because it's too loud. And a way that we're going to show this right now is we're going to play a mix at a regular volume, one that's too loud and one that's too low. By listening to these, you'll notice how the instruments sound different. You'll notice how the vocal and snare poke out a little bit more when you're on the lower end and how things change as you go back and forth between them. So we're gonna insert that right now. But thanks so much for that one, Rick. Now, Ryan, for you, what is one thing that you wish you knew when you first started mixing? The one thing that I really wish I could have hammered into myself when I was starting out is it doesn't matter how it sounds in solo. You can sit there and EQ and tone chase and tone sculpt all the time, but the second you take it out of solo and it just doesn't glue itself together, like everything you did was just basically in vain. And I totally agree with that sentiment. Um, there's times when I'm soloing things for just the sake of trying to get it to sound good, but then I put it back in the mix and I'm like, ah, oh, the top end actually doesn't work with everything else that's going on here. So actually let's pull up another example right now of showing how something could sound great in solo, but it doesn't sound great in the mix. And touching on that topic of where you were just saying stuff that's in solo, one thing for me was learning that not everything needs effects or compression or EQ. Some things just sound good the way that they are. One of the first things that I always reach for is compression, EQ, throwing it up on a track. But there was one time that Joey was mixing a song and there was the room reverb that was coming off the snare. And I'm like, oh, how are you gonna compress that? How are you gonna EQ that? And he's like, I'm not. It sounds good how it is. Like, why would I touch it? And that was a moment that I took in a very big concept that, that changed the way I think about audio forever. Gonna show an audio example right now, a track that actually didn't need any additional processing. This is gonna be really common in drum samples too, because why would you need to process them again when they're already processed? That happens sometimes. So we're gonna check that out right now. One thing I wish I knew when I first started was the signal flow of plugin chains. I did not know that the order that you put plugins in affected the way that the chain was going. Like I didn't know when you put in reverb first and then compression after that, it is going to compress the prior plugin. So I would have my chains all messed up. I wanna show you guys an example of what happens when you have your signal flow going properly versus when it's all out of whack because it doesn't even sound like the same processing whatsoever. <laughs> 
Let you right back, let you right back Every time you come around, I let you right back You never wanted that, I know it's all an act Every time you come around, I let you right back Let you right back, let you right back Every time you come around, I let you right back You never wanted that, I know it's all an act Every time you come around, I let you right back As far as things that I wish I knew would have known when I first started when I first got started, there were a lot of audio myths. You know, we were told, you don't add top end to stuff. If you, you know, don't record with any processing on the way in. If you need to use a equalizer, you should choose a different microphone. All of these things are completable, you know? And I think that one of the greatest things that I could teach a young person is to, you know, vet your source do your due, due diligence on the person that you're listening to and the best way i could tell you to do that is like their work you know if you like the records that they make then listen to what they have to say if you know they're screaming onto the internet and you don't like anything that they make then maybe it's not worth listening to absolutely great point there and i agree wholeheartedly all right so we got one more ryan it doesn't matter how good the mix is if no one hears it. And what I mean by that is you could sit there and tweak it for years and years and make the perfect mix. And then the artist releases it, all the hype behind the artist is gone and it you get the sub 1000 plays on Spotify. It could be the greatest mix in the world. No one heard it though. All right guys, so there you guys have it. Five tips that we wish that we knew when we first started getting into mixing. And hopefully these are some things that alleviate issues for you. Don't overthink stuff too much. And it's great to have sources of information from people that are doing this every day. I make a lot of videos. I am also in the studio a lot. These guys are in here every single day running an entire studio. He's chief engineer here. And this man is busy being the mad scientist that he is. If you haven't noticed, look, ha, look at my Rick is Rick shirt. He didn't want to wear the shirt, but it's okay because it got some use today. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You only have to do it one time and tap that bell for notification. So when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, my friends, catch you later.